Hello, this is Pastor Scott, and welcome to the Daily Message, or as they say in Russian, Da Daily Message. Uh, today is Monday. It is October 11th, so happy Monday. Uh, the Bible verse for today is Psalm 121, verse 2. You may have heard of Psalm 121 before. It's kind of popular. Uh, but verse 2 is, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, what it means that our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Links to subscribe to this channel down below. Also, you can subscribe to the Daily Message uh, emails, which will also get you our news so you can kind of know what's happening here at Holy Cross. i uh, love to keep you informed about the opportunities that are available. And there's a link to donate down below if you want to click that and uh, make a donation. That'd be great as well. So today's joke, I have to navigate to a different page because it's kind of long. I'm going to be honest, this joke is so colossally stupid, but when I got to the end, I laughed. So um, today's joke. Uh, this guy signs up for the army and he goes to basic training, right? When they're handing out the rifles, though, they run out. So um, the drill sergeant just gives him a stick and says, here you go. Um, just use this. And when you're, when you're going through training, just point it and say, uh, bangity bang, bang. All right. So he does, he starts going around and he starts, you know, training bangity bang, bang. And then the next week, uh, they do bayonet training and you know, all he's still got is a stick. So the sergeant just tells him to pretend that he's got a, a bayonet on the end of his stick. And, um, and when you're, when you're going to stab somebody, just say stabity stab, stab. So. He runs through training now and he's bangity bang bang and he's stabity stab stab. Well, they get finished uh, with their training and they get sent off to war and uh, he still doesn't have a rifle. So there he is, and he's in the landing craft and he's about to land on the beach and he you know, lands on the beach and he runs up the hill and he sees an enemy soldier and he points a stick at him. He goes bangity bang bang. And to his astonishment, the enemy soldier falls over dead. So he points a stick at another one. He says bangity bang bang. And, and that guy falls over too. He's like, this is amazing. So he runs around and, and someone, another soldier jumps out from behind him and he points a stick at him. He says, stabity, stab, stab. And the guy falls down. It's like, this is incredible. So he starts running around, just bangity, bang, bang, stabity, stab, stab, till he sees somebody coming at him. And he points to him, he goes, bangity, bang, bang, and nothing happens. The guy keeps coming. Doesn't know what to do. Bangity, bang, bang, nothing happens. One last time, bangity, bang, bang. He tries stabity, stab, stab. Nothing happens. The enemy soldier just runs right over him and crushes him. And as he lays dying, he hears the enemy soldier going, tankity, tank, tank, tankity, tank, tank. I, I apologize for doing that to you, but um, that, just, that, just, that just made me all right so today's sign that it is the apocalypse is that we now have crop circles in the uh, grass in the backyard of the church someone it seems um might have done a little bit of this or a little bit of this we're not sure uh but they took their car out in the back uh grass area and did some donuts i've seen worse um it was a small car and the donuts there weren't they didn't do the tear up the whole area but they did tear up a little bit of it and, uh, but it looks like a landing zone for aliens. So um, if there's a landing zone for aliens in the church uh, lot there back there, then it, clearly it must be a sign that is the apocalypse. But uh, today's sign that is not the apocalypse is that Merck, um, the drug company, uh, Merck, Merck, I don't, I don't know how you say that, um, but they have applied to the FDA for approval for a COVID treatment pill. So there's like, if you get the flu, you can get Tamiflu, right? It doesn't like cure you, but it helps with the symptoms and stuff. It makes it makes it easier, makes it more likely you'll survive. Um, then this is this is the equivalent, right? And you know, because right now all of the drugs that treat COVID are uh, IV, right? All of them you have to you have to you know go you know that whole thing. This you just pop a pill. So I don't know if it would be over. The, it probably wouldn't be over the counter. It'd probably be prescription. Uh, maybe only in hospitals. I don't know like enough of the details of like this thing to know like what you would, what it means to you and I, like on a practical level, like if we get COVID, but it is one more thing, right? That can treat COVID, which is good. So if we're developing more treatments for it, clearly it's not the apocalypse, but if there are crop circles uh, for aliens in the um, back of the church, then it must be the apocalypse. You're going to have to decide for yourself. So what's happening at church? 
Um, if you missed it, worship yesterday, uh, there was singing by me, which, which was horrible, but it was, I still enjoyed it. And other people, too. Uh, we all sang. And so that was great. Uh, I did get a couple questions last week about whether masks would still be worn. Yes, they were. So we sang while we were wearing masks. Uh, but it was it was good. It, it felt good to sing. Uh, it was a little weird, um, but it was still good. It was it was really good. Uh, I could tell there was like some some reluctance, and folks were a little kind of slow to get into it. But um, you know, it was it was really cool. And we also had fellowship afterwards. Uh, both worships are in the eight o'clock, uh, the eight o'clock and the ten o'clock. Both were in the fellowship hall, which you have no idea is behind me. But it is. It's right behind me. Um, well, the kitchen's right behind me, and then it's the fellowship hall, so we're that way. Um, but yes, so we did We did have that. We could use some help with the 8 o'clock. I think we've got uh, enough, you know, we kind of didn't have it after the 8 o'clock this Sunday, being honest. Um, but there, we're pretty sure we got somebody to make coffee, pretty sure we got somebody to make, uh, to bring some, some food to eat. But look, if you want to just, you know, buy some donuts or, a, you know, a Danish or... You know some cookies or you know 16 pies lemon ring big fan of lemon ring pie not saying you have to get lemon ring i'm just saying i like lemon ring pie and you can do with that information whenever you want um or lemon bars i also like lemon bars again not, not just just putting that out there if you want to bring stuff bring stuff that'd be great uh if you want to help bring stuff every now and then on a regular basis let me know or pastor morgan or cindy um but yeah so we had fellowship we had singing and and it it made a difference um, it made a difference. It was a noticeable difference for me. Like it felt more like, okay, we're getting back more to who we were before and things will never be the same, um, after this, but it felt just more normal. It was great. It was really, really good. So, uh, I am thankful for that. It's also stewardship campaign time. So you should have gotten, I don't have a copy of it here. Um, you should have gotten a brochure in the mail, um, kind of telling you what our stewardship campaign is. You'll get a you'll get a mailer this week, which kind of you open it up and it's got stuff in the middle, um, and then you'll get another one next week, and then our Sunday where we ask people to, um, you know, to to make their intent to give, you know, tell us their intent to give for next year will be October thirty first. So uh, please, you know, if you're if you're thinking, you know, you're not sure coming back, maybe thinking about October 31st would be a great day to come back and be part of that, celebrate Reformation Sunday, and also uh, the Stewardship Day, and also possibly All Saints, which is the, the Sunday after, which is the day that we remember and give thanks to God and mourn those who have died. And so that might be a helpful day for you. I mean, there's certainly been a lot of that in the past year. So uh, that's kind of some things that are coming up here at church. Um, reminder that it's probably going to be chilly in there in the sanctuary. We haven't turned the, once we turn the boiler on, it'll be 9,000 degrees. So wear warm clothes. Um, and also please consider donating to the air conditioning fund. It's called wear warm clothes, donate to the AC fund. I love that. And sign up for trunk or treat, uh, and the fall cleanup, uh, trunk or treat is the 29th. It's a Friday night and fall cleanup is the 23rd. All right. So that's what's happened in here at church. Uh, today's psalm is again Psalm 121. Let me read just a, a verse one and two together, and then we're talking about verse two. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Does that sound familiar? It might. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And this notion that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why does it matter that the Lord made heaven and earth? Well, I think that sometimes. Uh, my problems can feel overwhelming, right? The things I'm dealing with, the issues that, that I have, that I face, you know, with family, work, health, you know, kind of all the kind of, you know, financial, whatever, you know, the car breaks, the kids need something, someone gets sick, someone gets hurt, you know, all these problems, um, they can seem at the moment to be a lot. And sometimes they really, really are a lot. Don't get me wrong. You know, sometimes there are really big problems. But sometimes, for me, it's a, it's a challenge to keep problems in their place. And so a reminder that God made heaven and earth, right? If the Lord's going to give me help, and the Lord is the one who made, you know, heaven and earth, 
Or uh, is the fact that my car needs new tires really that big of a problem? You know? Or is the fact that, you know, my kids got a cold, is that, is that really that big of a problem? You know, it helps this, this reminder of all that God has done helps me to put my problems in perspective and worry about them less because, you know, the grand scheme of things, some of them are not that big of a deal. Now, some are that big of a deal, you know, um, COVID's a really big deal and people die. That's a really big deal. And people get really sick and that's a really big deal. And people lose jobs and, you know, houses burn down and there are, there are problems that are really big deals. Um, but there are some that aren't that I can sometimes make a big deal. And the big deals are bad enough without making the little deals into bigger deals. So this first reminds me to uh, keep my problems in perspective, I guess is what I would say. It helps me realize what's a big deal and maybe what's not. So um, I offer that verse to you as a way to uh, practice perspective, right? So that's, that's our, our spiritual practice for the day is to just practice having perspective. And when something comes up, something comes along, something makes you nervous, right? And you're like, oh boy, that's terrible. Ask yourself, oh, is it? Is it? Is it really that bad? And uh, see what, what God might have to say about that and whether, whether the maker of heaven and earth, you know, really wants us to get fussed over it. And if, you know, the answer is yes, then go be fussed over it. You got to worry about some things. Um, but if not, practice perspective is a good way to let it go. And frankly, I know I could use letting go of more stuff. So um, let's pray now. And we're just going to pray that God would help us have perspective, right? Perspective on our problems. So we're going to start with three deep breaths. Lord, Life can be hard sometimes, and we pray that you would help us to not make it harder by blowing things out of proportion. Help us, Lord, to have perspective on our problems. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You have done great things. And sometimes we have problems that require your greatness. And sometimes, Lord, we just have things that we get a little too excited about. So help us, Lord, to have perspective. Help us to realize when our problems are not big problems, but they're little problems, and to treat them accordingly, and to remember that you are maker of heaven and earth. You are our help, and you've got this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, you know, I know things are nuts. You know, problems happen all the time, and we've got crop circles in the, in the lot uh, out back, and it's probably the end times. But Jesus is still risen. The tomb is still empty. That hasn't changed. So be smart, stay safe, love absolutely everybody, and I'll see you soon.